Good evening to you all. Now, the story and the tale that I have for you today is not west of the Welsh border, but lies just over in the east in England. Now, along the English Welsh borders, you will find many castles of stone or the remains of old ramparts of mound. The reason being is because of long ago, this area was one of the most violent and most unsettled regions of Britain. And along its borders, it built many castles that still stand today as fearsome reminders of Norman military power. And one of these castles that I am in the shadow of today is Ludlow. Ludlow is not only famous for its castle, but its medieval architecture, its beauty, and its warm welcoming. But many years ago, this warm welcome was not always received within its walls. In fact, this castle was here very much so to subdue the warring Welsh fractions across its border. And over its many years of service, it saw civil war, greed, and noble disputes between brothers. And all this history has imprinted itself upon the walls of Ludlow Castle. But the tale I have for you today is based in a period of English history known as the Anarchy. We're a time where England was very much brought to its knees and where rival fractions from Britain would take advantage of this ill order on the land. So I invite you to listen to this tale of where a woman, very much set in this land, torn apart by fire and blood, lost her heart to a young man who repaid her love with dark intentions. Welcome to Ludlow. During the anarchy, England was torn apart. Nobles, brothers, kin were fighting and warring against each other. There were two banners, a banner flying for Empress Matilda and the other for King Stephen. Throughout England, there were different loyalties, different fractions supporting each ruler. And castles, fortresses and towns were falling to the respective leaders and sympathizers. Ludlow Castle did not escape this brutal period of history. In fact, it fell to Matilda and was then lay sieged by King Stephen. And throughout Britain, castles were falling, crumbling, and innocents were losing their lives and blood and livelihoods. This was a concoction of pure bloodlust. Britain was not a happy place to be indeed. This war torn apart families, neighbors, and old friendships. The garrison that fortified this place rebuilt its walls and restocked its supplies ready for the war to come. But loyal to Matilda, the leader of this castle was fearsomely in support of her. But his neighbors, heavily supporters and enthusiastic fighters for King Stephen. The winters that had gone past years before, they were sharing wine and celebrating feast days. But now they were very much exchanging sword instead of wine. Those who were friends found themselves in a very tricky place to be. And the daughter of the garrison leader here was very much a sweetheart of all the knights that were commanding the many skirmishes around the countryside here. And this knight in particular was causing horror, burning, raping and murdering. But nonetheless, the woman inside this castle, the young daughter of the garrison leader, was still besotted by him. Still saw him as the young cheeky rogue that used to go riding late into the moonlight. 
And because of this love and this sheer determination to have some sort of happiness in a time which has very little, decided the fate of the garrison that was fortifying this castle. Now, unfortunately for this lovesick woman and her romanticized nostalgia of this young knight no longer existed. The knight she once loved became brutalized by the true horrors of war. The many skirmishes, battles, brutality of people turned this knight cold. And he soon realized that he could take advantage of the once love that they shared roaming this countryside before fire very much inflicted upon its fields. He managed to get the message into this castle, proclaiming his love, his lust for her. And of course, being so heart drawn to him, she received these letters with joy. Sent letters back and in exchange of romantic and lustful notes, they decided to meet once more and to feel each other's warm embrace. This young girl was expecting a night of romance, but this night had no romance in him at all. When the night came and darkness crept closer to the stones of this fortress, she took the opportunity to light a candle in her chamber window, allowing this knight to know that she let down a rope, ready for him to climb and be with her once more. But unfortunately, the knight was not the only individual that was gonna climb through that window. A number of battle-hardened men entered her chamber, subdued her and gave her fearsome punishment. And once they were done with her, they drew their sword and caused carnage throughout this fortress. Fire, blood and death crept in like shadows. For those who were expecting to have a peaceful night were very much awoken by the greeters of death. Throughout the night, away into the morning, screams of torment, pain and death echoed the chambers throughout this fortress. Once the enemy troops had their enough of plunder in this fortress, they went to the gates of the main town, opened them up and let hordes of men in to cause their plunder and grief upon this town. Ludlow lit up like a beacon. The fires could be seen as far as the clear hills and illuminated the night sky. This young woman realizing that her heart very much gave way the safety of this fortress felt nothing but pain and shame. And as the cries were echoing throughout this castle, she lay there in torment until footsteps could be clearly hear approaching her chamber. And what stood before her in the doorway of her great room was that night that caused her such betrayal. This night still high on the scent of bloodlust grabbed her in a firm embrace and was about to deliver the same punishment as his men did hours before. Before he could gain that taste of lust, she drew a knife out of his pocket, sliced him across the face. And as he let go of her, she looked him clear in the eye, slit her old throat and fell below. It seems that she gave him one last scar in order to remember the shame that he should carry. For the betrayal of love and inviting darkness into a place where only light should have been. It's a sad tale, but of course, many places in Britain with history, such as this castle, has many harsh tales to tell. But again, this is very much a story, one of the many ghost stories that are associated with Ludlow. So if you do come here on certain times of the night, it is said you can see a white shadow falling elegantly below the battlements of this fortress and disappearing 
just below the brush. The truths are, Britain most certainly did have a brutal, violent past. It is hard to go to any city, town or fortress within Britain that doesn't have so. We have had been invaded by the Romans, the Saxons, the Vikings, and even in between, the people that called this place their home were fighting each other. So these ghost stories that we tell, these legends, yes, take with a pinch of salt. But do remember, there are reasons why there are great fortresses like this. And they are eerie reminders that neighbours of Wales and England and people that call this place their home were not always friendly with each other. So may these great ancient places serve as a reminder that we are blessed to live in a nation of such peaceful rain and to look upon monuments like this with awe and amazement. So if you are wandering around the marches of Wales, across the borders of Shropshire, you will come across Ludlow and it is a wonderful place to stay. So I bid you hoyo valfo today and I'll see you on our next travels. Take care.